Hey everyone, today I'm going to be using quantum mechanics to make holographic rainbows on chocolate. So in order to do this, I have to take you back to the double slit experiment. So if you remember the double slit experiment, you remember that if you shine a laser light through a wall that has two slits in it that are very close together, you get an interesting pattern on the background. Now the reason this pattern shows up is because the laser light that's coming out of each slit acts like a point source of light that spreads the light in all directions. And because those two slits are placed close together and they're spreading out in all directions, and because light has wave-like properties, it means that the waves of light will interact with each other in some places to destructively and constructively interfere with each other. So just by having two slits, you can start to separate light and see some of its wave-like patterns. But the interesting thing comes when you start to add more slits. If you keep those slits evenly spaced and add more and more and more, the pattern doesn't look like this anymore, but it begins to look like this. So what happens is you start to evenly space out your light in equal brightnesses across it. Now the reason this happens is because the more lines you add, the more destructive interference you get in between the points of light and the more constructive interference you get on those points of light. And so those points of light get evenly spaced and equal brightness. Now when you have a lot of slits on a plane, it's called a diffraction grating. And I have one right here. So let me show you what it looks like when I shine my laser light through the diffraction grating. Now this specific diffraction grating doesn't just have lines in one direction, but it has them in two directions as well. So it won't just space out the dots in one direction, but it'll space them out in a grid-like pattern. For example, I have my red laser light here. If I just shine it on the wall, I get one dot. But now watch what happens when I shine it through the diffraction grating. So you can see that it gets spaced out in a grid pattern. Now what's interesting about the spacing of this pattern is it depends on the spacing of the lines. So depending on how many lines you have on your diffraction grating, it will spread these out or move them together. But it also depends on the wavelength of light that you're putting through it. Because of the differences in wavelengths, the different distances between the waves of light, the constructive and destructive interference will happen at different points. And so longer wavelengths of light will be spread out further than shorter wavelengths of light. Okay, so when I shine a red light and a blue light on the diffraction grating, they're stacked right on top of each other. I have my lasers stacked on each other. But if you look at the pattern on the wall, you'll notice that the red light and the blue light aren't on top of each other anymore. They're offset to the left and right from each other. So based on how they're lined up on the diffraction grating, they should be stacked right on top of each other. But you can see that on this side, the red light has been skewed this direction, and on this side, the red light has been skewed that direction. So it's spreading out the light depending on its wavelength. The red light's moving out further away from the center, and the blue light's staying more packed in towards the center. So the red light is spaced further apart than the blue light on the grid. What this means is that if you shine a light source on the diffraction grating, it's gonna split up whatever that light source is into its individual wavelength components. So if you just shine white light on it, it's going to split it up into all the different wavelengths that make up white light. So it's gonna make a rainbow. And because it's a double axis diffraction grating, it's gonna make a grid-like pattern of rainbows. So it looks really cool when you look at a light through it. For example, watch what happens when I look at a normal white light bulb and put the diffraction grating in front of the camera. This is what it looks like the same thing when you put it in front of your eyes. It makes this beautiful rainbow pattern. So you can see now that it's just a grid of red light, a grid of yellow light, blue light, and the grid of the red light is spaced out more than the grid of the blue light, just like I showed with my lasers. If I turn the diffraction grating, it turns in the different direction. So cool. So you can see that this white light bulb doesn't have the full wavelengths of light in it. You can see that it's pretty distinctly just red, green, and blue LEDs. Now what looks really neat is if you take the laser, put it in front of a diffraction grating, and that spreads it out into a grid, and then run it over another diffraction grating, it spreads those dots out into another grid. So here's with one diffraction grating, and now moving another one in front of it. So you can see that by combining different patterns of diffraction gratings together, you can get different patterns to show up there. And if you do it just right, 
you can make some really cool patterns that look like pictures. For example, here's a diffractive optical element that has imprinted in it to make laser light appear as planet Earth. And as you move your laser light along the diffractive element, it'll look like Earth is spinning. So cool. So the way these diffractive sheets are made is there's not actually slits in it like the double slit experiment I was showing you earlier. But what it is, is there's actually lines and grids of reflective surfaces. So there's lines of reflective surfaces that act like a hole or a slit in it because basically it's just reflecting that light and some of it is passing through. So basically there's just lines of grooves on this that are reflective and not reflective. So when you just look at this diffractive grating, it's rainbowy. That's because it's diffracting the different white light from around the room and splitting it up into its red, green, and blue components. But what's cool about this is because it's actually just imprints in the plastic here, you could actually imprint this on another surface and it would have the same properties. It would have that same refractive grating on it as long as it's a little bit reflective. And one thing that you can actually make pretty reflective is chocolate. So chocolate has six different crystal phases. One of them is the most reflective and shiny. And that's the one we're trying to get here. And in order to get that, you have to temper the chocolate. So you have to not let your chocolate get too hot. You have to keep it at around 45 degrees Celsius. And once you get all your chocolate melted at 45 degrees Celsius, then you drop in some solid chocolate and let it start to crystallize. Okay, I think we've got our chocolate how we want it. Now I'm gonna just pour on the diffraction grating here and hopefully it will just imprint the surface on the diffraction grating onto the chocolate. Okay, the chocolate has now cooled. Let's see what this looks like. See if we can actually get a holographic image of this diffraction pattern on the back of the chocolate here. Ooh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. That is so cool. So I've now made a diffractive optical element out of chocolate. Look how pretty that is. So what's cool about this is you see a rainbow on it, but there's actually no dye on it whatsoever. So you can still eat it. Doesn't this just look so good? So it's amazing you can transfer this diffractive pattern onto the chocolate. It makes these colors that aren't actually caused by any dye or anything on the chocolate. It's just due to the reflective pattern on the chocolate. Now, if you want to try this on your own, I'll put a link in my description where you can get the, those diffraction sheets that I had. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. And I'll also put a link to the Instructable that gives really good instructions of how to do this on your own. It's an Instructable I found online that does the same thing. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab experiment boxes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.